Hey everybody, Andy from Tennis Euphoria bringing you my review of the Yonex V-Core 98. I strung mine with a couple of strings, um, Yonex Polytor Pro and Luxalon Adrenaline as you can see here, both at £52. Specs on this racket, it's the 98 square inch standard length 305 gram unstrung 318 swing weight. And what I love about Yonex rackets is um, this one again was also pretty much on spec and that tends to be the case with Yonex rackets which is great. So the V-Core line, you have three rackets within Yonex's V-Core line. Uh, the 100, which I suppose is the most obvious competitor to the other um, spin rackets out there, the Babolat Pure Aero and the Head Extreme MP. That version is 100 square inches, 16 by 19. Then you have the Yonex V-Core 95. That stands on its own in many respects because you have a smaller head size, 95 square inches. It's a little bit heavier so it's sort of geared towards I guess the more advanced player who's looking for control from their racket and it has a denser string pattern 16 by 20 I'm yet to test the newest version of that that will come soon this 98 version I suppose is designed to sit somewhere in between and I have to say that um, previous iterations I always felt were a little bit lost with its identity um, fairly stiff I'd find them uh, very fast through the air certainly could generate some spin this iteration has been uh, redesigned um, to a certain degree so we have a much softer feel at 62 RA and I can concur that this does feel much softer and for me that's a good thing I prefer RAs that are around 60 to 64 so you do get quite a um, plush response you feel the um, ball digging into the string bed a little bit which is um, I think a good thing other small updates you have SIF grommets which have some um, oil infusion uh, I believe that's designed to reduce friction between the string string and the grommet and you get greater string movement as a result and of course you have aero fins um, and a beam that is designed with um, all of the Yonex V cores to create masses of spin um, and that's certainly the case here too this is a racket where you can create loads of spin particularly if you have the mechanics that um, are that way inclined so how does this one play compared to previous iterations? You have that softer feel. Uh, you have supposedly a slightly uh, thinner beam at the top. Um, it's been thinned out, I think, at the bumper guard. And um, I actually sold my previous version of this, so I can't check that. Uh, but I think that's probably a minor change. The thing that you feel with this is that it is still exceptionally fast through the air. The aerodynamics um, of those um, fins combined with that 318 strong swing weight makes this just absolutely rapid through the air, to be honest. Um, that's a big strength for some people. I think for others, um, me included, that is a bit of a weakness. Um, this racket is um, on spec now competing with some excellent rackets, Head Extreme Tour, uh, Babolat Pure Aero VS. I say the VS because I'm about to test the new Aero 98. And then I guess it's also competing in to some degree with more control orientated categories, uh, things like the Blade and the Dunlop FX 500 Tour. So there's stiff competition in this space. And I think um, that what would set this one apart for people would be possibly that spin orientation although the head extreme tour is a good spin racket option too um, i think where this is different to the others is that it is the fastest through the air out of all of those categories um, but then again i think that does depend on uh, the user as to whether that makes it a good racket for you so how was this for me so the speed through the air was um, so sort of extreme that I actually quite struggled to dial in my game with this racket. Um, 
I must caveat some of that by saying that I am very aware that um, Yonex isometric head shapes and the uh, implication on optimal sweet spot and contact point there because of that isometric head shape, a video on that coming soon, subscribe to see that, makes um, this type of racket not optimal for me. I play better with um, uh, rounded shaped rackets where the sweet spot is a little bit lower and centered in the middle of the racket. So this might not be the case with others, but it was evident for me that I was um, connecting uh, with the ball on the racket at a place that wouldn't optimize the racket's response. So that was um, turning into a bit of um, uh, unpredictability. I couldn't quite dial in my depth. Um, I also was struggling to find um, the sort of angles and accuracy that I would find with other rackets. However, um, I do think that people who have um, mechanics and a natural sort of hitting spot at the higher point of the racket will get on a little bit better. You'll get a more solid response from the racket at that point. Um, I shared the views of a coach friend of mine who'd actually been testing this racket, he'd heard good things about it and was considering changing from his Ezo 98. He um, hit with it once, put it straight back down and just said, I can't hit a backhand with it. Um, I actually found the same and our backhand mechanics are quite similar. And I think that comes down to the pace through the air with this one. I actually found that the V-Core 98 was just too fast through the air and combined with those um, aero fins, the open string pattern, uh, it just meant that the ball um, would sail. Um, I'd just be connecting with the ball um, early, so I'd drag shots. Um, so a very difficult racket for me to play confidently um, with. Uh, it does have an improved feel. Um, I think these rackets have been sort of stiffer end, quite muted with the um, uh, 2D NAMD FlexForce Graphite and also the VDM mesh that you find in your next rackets. Some people will say that you don't get the sort of feel or connection that you get to the ball with other branded rackets. And um, generally, I, I would agree with that. Um, from a personal preference point of view, I never feel quite as dialed in and connected. Um, Although I think there was a step in the right direction to take this down to that 62 RA because you do have that slightly softer feel, although it still remains sort of pretty sort of muted. Um, one thing to be mindful of. So again, this comes down to the connection point that I make um, on rackets. Um, I didn't find this racket to be the most comfortable. Um, I noticed that if I was to um, hit out on my first serve or um, more interestingly, if I was to return a first serve, then I would actually feel some vibration and a little bit of discomfort in my wrist. Now again, the caveat to that, and this will be explained in a video I'm making at the moment around connection points on rackets, um, I would be connecting typically uh, with a ball to racket on this racket just below the optimal sweet spot and connection point for an isometric head shape, which would mean that the racket's response would not be optimal and I would be getting more vibration than others would through the racket. So that might not be the case for you. So overall summary then, exceptionally fast, whippy racket, too fast for me. I could possibly let it up and increase the swing weight to help uh, it uh, suit me some more. Uh, improve feel over the last one, uh, but not a racket that I feel um, advanced players will necessarily sort of dial into with absolute precision. Uh, someone who's perhaps looking for a little bit more control than the 100 is offering, then this is um, probably a good option if you are playing with modern technique and connecting at the top of a racket. Um, hope that was helpful. It's mixed, I guess, for this one. It certainly wouldn't be one for me, but it might be one um, for others. Loads of good reviews coming up, a couple of more um, videos around um, some interesting stuff around how to pick the racket for you too. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see those in the future. Thanks for watching. See you soon.